What's up? Um, last two years, I was uh, I started working in uh, wildland fire rescue, and it was a very pleasant, much needed change from uh, York City EMS. Um, it's a different type of outdoors than uh, than the city. Um, last year was a great season. By great season, I mean like a couple million acres burned and. Um, you know, I got I got a lot of work. It's a paradox of a tree hugger to be like rooting for the wildfire because of my source of income. But um, it was about uh, it was about this time last year. Um, I thought I was done for the season, and uh, the company that I had started working for uh, called me up and asked if I wanted a real easy assignment in um, in southern Oregon, and I said hell with it. I'll. I'll take it, I'll fly out there. They said their fire's not doing much. Uh, they're in mop up, it's pretty much a logging operation at this point. Um, you're just gonna go sit on a UTV. And uh, I was like, cool, that's fine. Um, never been to the Pacific Northwest before, um, but I was aware of the Patterson footage, uh, which if you're not aware of the Patterson footage, it's the Bigfoot footage that you think of when you think of Bigfoot sightings. It's the one, um, it's actually in Northern California, but this one, you know? Um, so, <laughs> um, so I got out and it was, uh, it was my second day uh, on the fire and uh, in the old growth forest, it was beautiful. Um, and they were right, there was nothing going on on that fire. I didn't see any active fire while I was there, just a bunch of smoldering and it was very smoky. Um, but as a, as a rescue team, we're first on the line and last off. And I don't say that as any sort of like, look at me, I'm a hero. It's annoying as hell. Um, but they can't do anything unless medical resources and rescue resources are available. So at the end of every shift, there's an accountability check for our division. Everybody comes off the line and gets a head count. And then the last thing that goes over the radio, REM 6, everyone's accounted for, you're good to come off the line. So it's about 6.30 in the evening, starting to get dark. Fire weather behavior is fascinating. Um, wildfires generate their own weather and the weather impacts the, the fire. And as the sun goes down, temperatures change, the weather inversion pushes smoke down to ground level normally. So visibility gets pretty uh, dicey in the evening. But we loaded up the UTV on the trailer, and uh, started the long drive back to camp. And mind you, this is a, a federal emergency incident that is very closely monitored and very closed to the public. And uh, so we start driving back these windy old growth forest roads. And uh, I was driving, my partner Marcos was in the passenger seat and I'd say about a hundred yards in front of us on the road, I saw what I thought was uh, an elk walking towards us. And then I realized it wasn't an elk unless the elk was doing this because it stayed, you know, like that. And um, so then I thought that's uh, someone, uh, one of the firefighters or division supervisors, task force, whoever, stopped to take a pee, a pee on the side of the road and was walking back to his truck. And we got closer and I watched this thing walk across the road and then go down this little embankment. And there was no truck. And drove on in silence for a little bit before Marcos says, you saw that, right? <laughs> I said, yep. He said, that wasn't a bear, was it? I said, nope. He said, there's no one else on this fire, right? I said, nope. He said, you ever gonna tell anyone about this? I said, nope. <laughs> Sorry, Marcos. <laughs> <laughs>